Hello everyone, welcome to Tabletop Unboxing. For this episode, we're going to be covering the brand new set to be released for Magic the Gathering, which is Core Set 2020. So, without any further ado, let's dive right into it. So, what is the Core Set 2020? It's basically a brand new set of cards that is meant to be essential for the 2020 upcoming year. Played a lot of it on uh, Magic the Gathering Arena, which is... I uh, know, Arena's having a little bit of a problem at the moment because of all the controversy surrounding the brand new... What are they called again? Mastery... This is Mastery set? I can't remember. But apparently, what happens is that you're paying around 50 euros to get like a leveling up system that gives you 200 euros worth of content, right? However... It's, there's an upper limit to it, so you can't actually make it to level 100 unless you pay to make the last 10 levels because you only have a certain amount of EXP per day, which is 1,000, and you require a certain amount. Well, so it's 100 times 1,000, which is 100,000 EXP in order to make it to what you call level 100. Second, ooh! The Kaya wins here. Mythic straight off the box, all right. And an island card. Just putting these into like different orders so they're easier to separate later on. But yeah. So there's only 90 days in a season. So you can only get 90,000 in any given season, meaning you're capped at level 90. So despite paying 50 euros, you have to pay an extra 250 gems per level. Which is a little bit. I don't know. It's just. Very greedy on their part. Patent Maker, Moldavine Reclaimer, Dragon, oh, and it brought back Scarlet Lance. Oh, we got a foil as well, Undead Servant. That said, though, you did get a, a really cool looking cat, so I don't know if that was worth it for most of you. What else is there? Oh, yeah, the, uh, I don't know, the current scene in the arena at the moment has really changed. Mono Red turned out to be really good last season. However, current season, I'm not too sure. I see a lot of dinosaurs being played, and they seem to be really good against my Mono Red. Played a lot of Blue Is It as well, but ugh. I don't know. The scene's just changed way too much. There's also these elementals as well. Just a moment. Sorry, I'm just trying to get back to the habit of opening these up and thinking about my trauma talk. Okay, what was I saying? Okay. So basically, I was playing a couple of games the other day and there was a bunch of dinosaur decks and it was just... They had this enraged tank. So whenever you hit it, a certain ability activates and one of the green ones was like, whenever you hit me, uh, the owner gets to search his entire deck and put a land out tapped. Oh, Shunder a Pyromancer. And Voracious Hydra. Shandara's Awakened Inferno, so this is a card that you play when you play the Awakened Shandara. So she costs 6 mana and... Oh man, she stacks pretty hard. So it takes 8 to actually kill her. Unless you manage to destroy her the first turn, because she'll probably cast the Emblem. Which means that every turn that you have an upkeep, well, which is every turn, it will take one additional HP from you. And by doing so, it actually stacks. So second turn, two HP per turn, then third turn, then you have like so many turns left in the game. <laughs> that said, it does cost six mana to put out, so I'm not too sure how handy that will be. But people are making really good use of her. I checked her in as one of my cards, but I have 20 mana, so it requires 33% of my deck mana to actually play her? Or a little bit less, but still. And I don't want this to go on for too long, so I'm just going to skip right into the uncommons. Here we go. Fencing Ace. Creeping Trailblazer. Oh! A Mu Yang Sky Dancer! Alright, so this girl is pretty awesome. So, for a plus two, she has like four HP, and then one target gets minus two and loses flying. So... Pretty good tech, but one of the best ones about her is that you create a 4-4 four, four elemental bird with flying and then you get an emblem saying you get to draw a card. So you manage to like build her up to 4, you have an extreme amount of draw power by like... She only costs 3 mana as well, so you can play her pretty early on. 
That said, though, she will be taken out pretty easily by a shock land. So you just have to make sure that your opponent used up all his mana before him. Pretty surprised we got her. Hoping we get Shandora. Alright. Couple of reprints here. Oh, and here we go. Session Blade. Veil of Summer. Scholar of the Ages. And Knight of Ebon Legion. That's another thing as well. This guy's played a lot inside the. Uh, it's a. Oh well, another foil here. As a, a vampire deck. So for tree mana, he gets a tree tree and death touch at the end of the turn. And he costs one to play. Yeah, which is pretty decent. At the beginning of your end step, if, you, if a player lost four or more like this turn, put a 1 1 on him. So he scales fairly well. I don't know, vampires as well. Which is actually. Kind of funny because before I started this video, I was playing as a vampire deck and Soren, the, the two Sorens, the ones that. Uh, there was one, I can't remember what set he's from, but he lets you do one damage and gain one life. At the same time, he has another ability which is uh, minus X, which is at the cost of a card inside your graveyard, and then it will come back to you with vampire abilities. And there was the other one as well, Sacrifice a Vampire. That's the one inside this set. Oh, and Leyland's. I'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, so how it worked was that he plays like super weak vampires and he uses the ability in order to uh, kill any of your uh, strong monsters on your field, which isn't too bad in using an like, aggro deck, but if you were playing green, it's just, it's a pretty hefty loss. At the beginning of your turn as well, if he just played the card, he can sacrifice what you call. No, it was a tree minus tree loyalty ability. And it did something really weird, and I can't remember what it was, but it's on the tip of my tongue. Hopefully, the RNG gods will be very merciful and we'll be able to either remember it pretty soon, or we'll manage to draw it. I can tell you guys about it. Oh yeah, it was like that. I remember. There we go. Okay. Mind derped for a second there. Okay, so what it was was that you minus tree, and then you get to play any vampire from your hand. So this guy, I can't remember what turn it was, but it was really early. Turn tree or something? He played the Soren, then he minus tree loyalty, then he played like a five mana card, and then that just completely stumped me. I was not expecting that. Wait, do all of these come with like a foil card? Or am I just getting really lucky? Shocklands. Oh, Leylands as well. Alright. So another thing that's coming back are the Leylands. So if you have the card at the beginning of your... Oh! Calvier of Dawn. This is... Huh. This is really weird. One stack and I already have three... Three Mythics from this stack. Alright. Alright, so you're buying this pack. Just kick the... Aim for the ones on the left. Aim. That's my advice. Yeah, so one of the good counters to aggro is just putting, like, I put two Leylands and Confusion inside my deck, so whenever they try to cast any spells, they also have to do two damage on to themselves as well, which is for Leylands of Combustion. The one for Grass, I think it's much stronger, because it has the ability to scale faster, or longer term. So how it is, is that for every mana that you tap, you're able to tap an additional mana, so that... If you manage to get that in the very first turn, freaking gorgeous. Because you're playing so many strong cards so early on and you can overwhelm them pretty quickly. Put that with like a Nissa or another additional tap and then you turn your lands into freaking haste with 4-4. Four, four. Oh man, it completely stumps. I'm such a troll when it comes to that stuff. I'm only getting these different combinations because of the new leveling up system. I think it's an okay. Like, all things considered, it's not too bad, to be honest with you. It couldn't use a lot of re-ramp, it couldn't use... In my opinion, if it were to be re-ramped, I think it should be... You should be able to get EXP whenever you play, because you can only get 1,000 each turn, which is really stupid. Why would you have just... I don't know. What was the point of capping EXP, and then they made a statement saying, Oh yeah! 
the EXP is not capped, but, you know, cast doubt on that because there's no other way of getting EXP after you get your 1,000 a day. You get 200 from the first game that you play, that you win, sorry. And then you get an extra 50 for the next two wins. And then you get like, what was it? No, you get, was it 200? And then you get like 700 for EXP missions. And you only get one mission every 24 hours. I can't remember if it was actually, no, no, it was 800 and then for the first win of the day is 100 EXP and then the other two is 50. All right, it's all coming back to me. Vayner Cleansing, Torn Tails. So yeah, it has reignited a little bit of my love for the game. And I really hope Wizards managed to fix it. Because there are a lot of like CCGs online that just give you a bunch of free crap. That said though, Magic has been tried and tested, so I guess they can afford to be a little bit more greedy, but I'm pretty sure in this day and age they won't really get away with it. So Scott Knot, you know, Worksmith, Troll, and Agent of Treachery. I don't think there's gonna be any mythics like this one, because we already got three. So unless this is a really good box, or very biased towards the left hand side, I don't know man. Currently on level 12, and I do know for a fact that they're getting rid of the leveling up system. Or rather, not the leveling up system, the leveling up purchasing system. Because no one wants that, why would you do that? Overcome, Meteor Golem, Corpse Knight. Oh, and here's the Leyland of Combustion. This is the one you tech in in order to play against those damn aggro decks. Oh, sugar! Calvier of Night. I spoke way too soon about getting mythics. All right, so when he enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, destroy target creature and opponent controls. When he dies, return target creature with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Ah, I don't know. I got him online as well. Actually, he was inside my uh, sealed. He was my only mythic in sealed, the first one I played. And he just, he did not play well at all. He costs way too much to like put onto the field. And by the time I could actually play him, it was just, it's over. GG's, man. Everyone's like spamming elementals and then I'm screwed. Oh. This girl is inside the uh, starter kit for this for this set. Rapid Bite, Goblin Fear, Spider. Okay, here we go. Bloodthirsty Aerialist, Berserker, and Apostle of Purifying Light, and oh, Chandra's Regulator. So they really want you to play Shandar. Chandra? Chandra. So whenever you activate a loyal ability of Sandra's Planewalker, you may pay one. If you do, copy that ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. Then one, tap, discard a mountain card or a red card to draw a card. It's it's okay. It's not too bad. I don't think it's very essential you're playing Chandra, because there's like three different forms of her, and the one that's ah, the one that's being played quite a lot is the Acolyte version. So she has like four loyalties straight off the bat, only costs three to play. And oh man. Her first two aren't too bad. I can't remember the first one, but the second one was you create like two 1-1 one, one elemental counters with haste. And if you copy that ability, you manage to have like four, so you can just spam the enemy pretty quickly. This card in particular, I thought was going to have a lot more play, Chandra's Spitfire. So whenever an opponent is dealt non-combat damage, uh, it gets a plus three until the end of the turn. Which isn't too bad, but for three mana, it just really isn't worth it. Because for tree mana, you can get like, oh man, so much crap at the moment. You can get a couple of shocks in, you can get like your Vishku Pyromancer. Ooh, foil land. Bing bong. And yeah, people can just tech you pretty quickly. It's maybe being useful, like, I played a more mana heavy deck. But 23 is a lot of mana. Oh, yeah, 23, I have 70 cards in my deck. Probably should lower that down. I'm going to be trying to play some of the elemental decks next, but I think I ran out of like wild cards, so I can't exactly make a bunch of new ones because I, ah, I regret it so much. <laughs> I wasn't aware that we were going to get like the core set early, so I made like a bunch of decks using like the other 
sets, and now it's going to expire in like a couple of months. That said, I do have a pretty nice blue Dajun deck, so... There you go. Wake Root Elemental, and a land card. Ooh! A lot of foils in this. Alright. Going, okay. So, I probably should tell you guys about the pricing as well. The most expensive card at the moment is clearly Shandora's Awakened Form. It can't be countered. It's extremely powerful. Oh, Hajani, I should talk about him as well. There's a weird, janky deck going around if you play like, uh, or you don't play ranked, and you get matched up with these white decks. Alright, so the Awakened One was said you can't be countered on top of being played. Oh, this is the one. This is the card that's constantly being played. So whenever Risen Reef or another elemental enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may put it onto the battlefield tap. If you don't, put the card onto the battlefield. If you don't put it into the battlefield, put it in your hand. And you would think it's not a good ability per se, but I have you know when there's like freaking two of these on the field and he gets to look at his deck, it's, uh, it ramps up pretty quickly. It needs to happen once. And also, it's a good thing about like Mono Red. You can play like the Goblin Chain Whirler and it does one damage to everyone. So it can clear them out, but you have to time it really precisely. Otherwise, they're just going to keep spamming the board. And by the time you're on four mana or three mana, they have like, like freaking nine mana on the field. Really wish we get a Johnny in it so I can tell you guys about it. I'm gonna do it anyway, but it'd be nice to have a written example. Basically, a Johnny is having. I'm not too sure. The newest one is that it has a really powerful ability, which is hard to pull off because you know it works like that. So there's an angel on uh, what you call angel on M19, where if you manage to get more than five HP per turn you will be able to summon a 4-4 token with Vigilance and Flying, which is freaking amazing. But it didn't really have too much support. But now that you have the new Ajani, the Ajani allows you to heal up depending on how many cards you have on the field. But also, if you manage to have more than 5th... Oh, Temple of Epiphany. All right, screw you once. This is another really good card that just came into play. But yeah, so you have a, a token. You manage to get a 4-4 for free, which is pretty awesome. But if you have a Johnny and you manage to get more than 15, your base HP, you can exile the Ajani Planeswalker. And at the same time, you can exile all the creatures. Oh, sugar! All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So this, this, this works out pretty fine. Okay. So this is a Johnny, Strength of the Pride. He's currently going for around, what was it? Five, six euros at the moment? Don't know what it is inside the UK. I mean, well, the UK, because they're no longer part of the EU. Hopefully. But yeah. So, first one you gain life equal to the number of creatures you control plus the number of plane walkers you control. Next, you can create a 2 2 cat soldier named Johnny's Pride Mate. Whenever you gain plus one life, you get a, you get a plus one one counter on a Johnny's Pride Mate. So, basically, you get a card that costs two mana for free. Well, not for free, minus two, but it's still pretty nice. And if you have like a Johnny's, uh, Johnny's Strength or the Artifact anyway, whenever a monster comes into play, he manages to get another one HP. So if you have two of those, he gets plus two straight off the bat. So now you have like a four, four for a minus two loyalty. Then that's, that's pretty good. And since you already gained two HP from playing him down, all you need is three. So play your Revitalize or something. And then your and you fi finish the condition of your angel. Now you have 5 HP and then you can get like an additional angel with Vigilance. And then over here, if you have at least 15 life, more than your starting life total, exile a Johnny and each artifact and creature your opponents control. That's, oh man, play it just for the troll factor. Like it's, it's really fun. I can recommend it, 10 out of 10. That said though, 90% of the time that I played it, it works. But the other 10%, which I think is a very high number for some strange reason, some genius is trying to play a bunch of, like, planeswalkers against me. 
So you know what? He doesn't exile planewalkers. So now I'm here with my like 46 HP and this guy just has like nothing on the field and I can't do jack crap. Legion's End. This is another good one. So how this one works is that it exiles everything with a converted mana cast of two or less and everything with the same name. It's inside the hand and also inside the graveyard. So if they are spamming freaking tokens everywhere, let's say you're playing against me and my Ajani like, army and I have like a bunch of angels on, just play this card, I'm screwed. You, I lost every day. All in one turn for the cost of two mana. Amazing. Our last set, or our last pile, anyway. Okay. Hopefully, we can get another. We got so many mythics in this one. I'm not too sure if this is just scaled really badly, or the increased the rates, or I'm just being real. Okay, here she is. This is the card that you're gonna get for the uh, what you call starter kit. It's uh, it's very weird. So you may pay uh, white mana and tap four creatures. You can throw with flying rather than pay this cost. So you can play it for just three mana if you have like the card straight away. And other creatures you control with flying have indestructible. So if you have this on your Johnny Jank deck, and then you play it with all your angel tokens, you're basically invulnerable to attack, and there's nothing they can do to defend themselves against you. So it's basically you play this and then you win the game. But it does require a lot of circumstance. It does have 7 HP, so pretty hard to get off the field. Also very hard to summon. Alright, what do we have here? More air elementals and cage fury. Oh, sugar! Another one! Alright, this is the sword I was talking to you guys about. Alright. So target creature you control gains death touch and lifelink into end of turn. If it's a vampire, put a 1-1 counter on it. So it scales pretty nicely, it only costs 3 mana. You may sacrifice a vampire. When you do, Soren, Imperious Blood deals 3 damage to any target and you gain 3 life. Okay, so it wasn't to destroy anyone, it was to deal 3 damage. But uh, most of my deck doesn't even have like 3 HP, so that's basically an insta-kill for them. And you may put a vampire from your card, from your hand onto the battlefield, which is really nice. So he'll still be on the field next turn as well, and you have one really strong creature to defend him. Which is probably why he's going for... A decent amount at the moment, I think. Yeah, he's the second most expensive card. So I think he's going for around 14 euros at the moment. But you're gonna need like a play setup in order to make him like even val well not valuable. What's the word? Viable, that's the word. Alright. What else do we have here? Another Awakened Inferno. Ah, uh, must you taunt me? Because of my lack of Chandra's. And a Marauding Raptor. This one I thought was going to get a lot more play. But... So I told you guys about the Enrage mechanic where if you hit them, they'll do something. So this guy works is that he only costs 2 mana and he's a 2 tree. And by playing him, all your other cards get 1 minus to their cost. For playing, but he does do 2 damage to them as soon as he gets in it. But if it's another dinosaur, he gets a plus 2. So he'll have a 4 tree until the end of the turn. And I thought it was going to be more useful than it is, but... I don't really see people teching him in a lot, to be honest with you. I don't really see him at all. Because some people would rather keep the 1-1, one -one, because there is a Raptor where you kill it, or do damage to it. You're able to summon a tree tree counter. So some people will just uh, they'll attack with the 1-1 one -one to bait you into defending with it. So then they'll play some more defense, and then the, the creature and the token will still be alive. But now he has a tree tree counter because it's not when he dies, it's whenever he's attacked. And a Luxodon Life Chanter. Which I thought was pretty neat. It was a very. I don't know, it was a very unique way of finding out about these things. There's just so many different combinations and janks going on. I'm not too sure which one's my favorite at the moment. And I'm really upset about the state of the arena. Not the overall meta scene per se, just like what Wizards trying to do and trying to milk us for our money, but yeah, I think it's gonna be fine. So lots of tears. I don't know what this does. Return all non-land permanents to their owner's hand. If you return four or more non-terminate tokens, you control this way. 
You may put a permanent from your hand onto the battlefield. All right, so it's kind of like a weak version of Time Shift. Hmm, not bad, not bad. It does cost six mana. Though. So by that time, you want to like unflood the board. I suppose if people have like a token army, then you'll be able to do it. Jump gift. Oh, Angel Vitality is another one that you'll see inside the Angel deck. If you gain one life, you will gain that much life plus one. Yep, not bad. 2-2, two, two, as long as you have a two, 25 or more life, which is very easy to do with these like brand new white decks. Scampering Scorcher, Rapacious Dragon. Alright, so this guy is a bit odd. Because he's not very good, but you see him a lot. So he's a flying creature. Well, I don't think he's very good anyway. So when he enters the field, he costs 5 mana, so he's a flying, and you get to create two treasure tokens, right? And the treasure tokens can be tapped and destroyed to be adding any mana you want onto the field. So you get your mana's worth of attack and defense, I guess. But I'd rather just play something else for 5 mana. There's so many better options than like that stupid dragon. That said, I'm also one of those people who play that stupid dragon because my drafting was... Uh, I just have the worst luck in draft, or I'm just terrible at it. Let's figure in rain root and a shard summons. Oh, a lot, a lot of foil. That's it. Pretty happy about my mythic foil. Boop, vampire. I mean zombie. Okay. Overcome, Colossus Hammer, Sir Lerulian Drake, and Masterful Replication. What the f- Ah, it looked really cool, but it's just a foil and common. Oh, down there are less tree packs. Can we get like another mythic from this box? Why are there so many mythics in this box? On the one hand, I'm pretty happy that I'm getting them all. On the other hand, if this is the common, I don't know, I guess the prices of Mythics all over the place will actually go down, so... This is not the good one. This is the okay-ish one. The Alkalite one's the one you want. Alright, second last one. Let's do this. Here's the treasure token for your awesome dragon. This guy, tap one to add life. Not bad inside of the Johnny deck. That said, healer hawk all the way. Ooh, and there Leyland's Sanctity. Really hoping for Leyland, the green Leyland. Only got Combustion and Sanctity this one. Even the Void one's pretty dense. All right, last pack, everybody. For everything, thank you all for watching very much. It's been a pleasure doing this video. A ferocious pup is here to gracious with his presence. And mask of mutilation, scholar of the ages, and embodiment of ag agonies. There we go. Oh, is there something behind this? Ah, <gasps> uh, no, vampire of the dire moon. Okay, so let's just uh, have a recap of what we managed to get inside this box. So it was Soren Imperious Blood, not bad. A Johnny, Strength of the Pride, Cavalier of the Night, Mulong, Mu Youngling. I want to call her Mulan. Oh, by the way, that's a terrible trailer as well with Mulan. Where's Mushu? All right, everyone. Thank you all so much for watching, sticking around. It's been an absolute blast opening this up and exploring this with you. I'm very happy about the pools inside this set, and I'm looking forward to playing it like next week once it's out on the 12th. But if you can't wait, just go on Magic Online or Magic Arena and uh, yeah, try to kick some ass there. But I will warn you, it costs quite a bit and at the moment it's still a little bit... If you haven't played it yet, I say you can start at the moment because by the time that you're able to... I don't know, by the time you're able to play like metal meta decks, you'll... I'm pretty sure Wizard would have fixed all the problems with the mastery systems and everything. Plus there's a bunch of like codes that you can get now that might expire by the time you start. So I say get right into that. Hoard up a bunch of gems and play some of that sealed. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, as always, have a nice day, everyone. Thank you. See you.